Welcome back to Newsday. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now to Tanzania, where President Samia Suluhu Hassan has lifted a ban on opposition rallies in an overture to political rivals seeking restoration of democratic traditions. The ban was imposed in 2016 by her strongman predecessor, John Magufuli. Hassan has been under pressure to break with the hardline policies of Magufuli, who died in 2021 after six years of heavy-handed rule in a country once seen as a democratic beacon in East Africa. Magufuli had to come to power in 2015 as a no-nonsense man of the people, but presided over a sustained crackdown on dissent and political freedoms, earning the nickname Bulldozer for his authoritarian leadership style. I am here today to come and give permission and announce that the announcement to honor the ban on public rallies is now lifted. This is a democratic right in our laws. It's a right for political parties to hold their public rallies. It is our responsibility, as the government, to secure political gatherings. You need to notify us as required by the law, and the security services will assess the situation and give the go-ahead depending on the situation. But for now, at this stage, as a country, permission will be given because it is our responsibility to protect your right to hold your rallies safely. It is your responsibility as political parties to adhere to the rules as required. It is up to us as Tanzanians, I beg you as we give you permission to hold political rallies, let's indulge in mature politics. Well, Arise East Africa analyst Mark Bichachi joins us now to examine the import of the expansion of the political space within Tanzania for the nation's polity. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Happy New Year. Uh, let's discuss Tanzania it, it, with this. Uh, well, the the female president, she seems to be, you know, uh, carving out a name for his uh, herself. How do you expect that uh, Tanzanians and the rest of the polity will be taking this new an announcement, especially her rivals? How do you think they will uh, take this announcement? Uh, first and foremost, this is a key issue for Tanzanians because over the last uh, six or so years, the democratic space has shrunk. We know last year, um, uh, uh, Suluhu herself uh, was present when Freeman Boye, the leader of uh, Chadema party, was arrested hours before having a public gathering. So the return uh, to political activity for the main opposition party, Chadema, is going to breathe a sigh of relief for many of its supporters. Uh, across the country, but also Tanzania itself is feeling as if it is healing uh, from the damage to its democratic space that had been caused uh, by uh, the, 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 the actions of Magufuli when he was president. So this is a collective sigh of relief on, on, on Tanzanians on both sides of the divide. Right. Now, uh, President Salu Hassan has already declared her intention to run in 2025. But this is undoubtedly going to create some rifts with Magufuli loyalists within the CCM ruling party. How will those politics play out? Because she's already had to sack a lot of Magufuli loyalists. She's already had to manage the politics to stay in power. Uh, what does this do to her bid to run for president in 2025? But this this is a good question because there are definitely Magufuli loyalists and a number of people who think that uh, she should not even have been president because uh, they had put her there almost as a placeholder. It's only that the constitution uh, allowed for uh, a su immediate succession of the deputy president once uh, Magufuli passed on. Uh, but that being said, she has moved on to consolidate her power. Uh, she is moving to create uh, changes not only in cabinet but also within the ruling party. Now, why am I talking about the ruling party? Because in Tanzania, there's only been one party that has ruled uh, from its independence, and that's uh, the Chama Chama Pinduzi CCM. And, and that uh, party will continue to do so uh, as, as if, if the numbers that we saw in 2020 uh, and, and, and before that, uh, if they continue to be. So the expectation is that the party will continue to rule. And if she can keep hold of the party, she will continue to rule. But also, in her current move in creating free space 
uh, for the opposition to operate, then she's also endearing herself to a new bunch of the electorate. An electorate that was previously against CCM will now look at her as someone who is is balanced, someone who is fair, and therefore there's a big chance uh, that by what she has done, she has won the hearts and minds of people who were not previously within a CCM. So uh, I expect that she should be fine provided she's able to secure the CCM ticket. And shaking off the authoritarian uh, pre presumption uh, from the previous administration, it seems that she's moving forward. Do you expect that she will be making any more sweeping announcements of reforms uh, from things that were previously not allowed uh, within Tanzania. I, I, I expect and suspect she will, and the reason I expect so is part of the reason she has made this move is it's part of her way of consolidating power. If you have enemies within, then you have to make friends without. And she has now made friends uh, with, uh, for example, on Freeman Boye. She's making uh, friends with the, the likes of Zito Kabwe, who are excited about this uh, particular statement. So uh, the more there is uh, fighting within CCM, the more uh, she will reach across the the aisle to consolidate her power. So I do expect in coming days that she will continue to do so. And she is also carving a name herself as a reformist. And that's what the Ken uh, the Tanzanian people, sorry, desire. And, and therefore, I suspect that she will continue to do so. Right. Now, there's often criticism towards the opposition parties in Tanzania, where people often say that they don't know the difference between rallies and protests. Is the political environment ready for the lifting of this ban? Will they be able to conduct genuine rallies or is this going to be another opportunity to protest? You know, it's it's very interesting um, how Tanzanians would consider what happens there. Protests. Uh, Tanzania is one of the most peaceable countries in in Africa. Uh, therefore, uh, the political instigation that the campaigns or rallies done by uh, uh, oppositions have been demonstrations have been protests is not necessarily true. It's a matter of of perception. And is the country ready for for this particular change? Yes, they are. Because because let's remember, it has only been six years uh, when uh, there were burnings, there was, uh, uh, th these things were banned, there was a shooting of an uh, opposition leader, uh, there were various arrests and things like that. Hita to that, before Magufuli became president, Tanzania was a vibrant uh, political and democratic space. So it is not just about them being ready, this is uh, them returning to normal, returning to where they used to be and what they used to do before uh, this point. And the Tanzanian economy is projected to grow faster in 2023 than previously. And, uh, you know, obviously COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war. Do you credit uh, any of this to the uh, new administration of uh, the president, uh, uh, Suluhu, especially since she took over since uh, March 2021? How would you rate her administration so far? I, I think you, you have to give it to her because she inherited an economy just uh, post-COVID. Uh, Tanzania was one of those uh, countries that had refused uh, to do a national drive towards immunization. Uh, they had not gone into lockdown. And then, of course, she steered the country through uh, the, the, the Russia-Ukraine wars, the, the, the inflation that the world is facing. So you have to give it to Suluhu. She has done a good job not only of running the economy, but also of marketing Tanzania. She has also reached out to the uh, Kenyan uh, president. She's reached out to various neighbors and mended bridges. Magufuli was uh, known to be quite uh, a nationalist and, 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 and pro-Tanzania in his approach. She has opened up uh, the country again. So she's done a lot in terms of supporting the Tanzanian economy. So you do have to give credit to her. Well, with her support seeming to be growing and uh, with uh, what seems to her, her personality and following also seeming to be more endearing towards her, what's the future for Freedom Boy and the Chadema party as the biggest opposition? Uh, will these new regulations give them a fair chance or do you think that uh, CCM is going to continue to hold on to power? 
I think CCM will continue to hold on to power, and that's simply because uh, it is the party that 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 Tanzanians know. It's similar in strength and in grip as the ANC is in uh, South Africa. So they will hold on to power. However, there will be a resurgence of Chadema. Remember, Chadema was nearly uh, dissipated in the previous election. I think you would see uh, them have a, a form of resurgence. They will have more representation def definitely in parliament, but will it be enough uh, to unseat uh, CCM from power? I doubt it will. And will this be enough for the opposition to maybe meet her halfway in order for the country to move forward and for democracy to be uh, recognized and, uh, you know, executed in a proper way? Well, I, I think the move that she has made is, is I've said before, is for her to bridge the divide. She's having problems within uh, CCM, and one of the ways to consolidate her power is to reach across the aisle and and create enough um, uh, uh, support uh, so that the CCM does not feel that uh, she's isolated. So I think what is going to happen is, uh, and she said it in her speech as well, is closer collaboration and a lot more tolerance and and. I I think the opposition will want uh, at some point to give her uh, certain strategic uh, elements of support and not just give her general support. And very few ever expected that a Zanzibari could become president. Uh, what does this do for some of the national political dynamics? Well, it's interesting because uh, Zanzibar has rarely given a president to mainland uh, Tanganyika. Uh, however, how M Madame Sulu has taken it, uh, how she uh, takes her religion, how she speaks about family, how she speaks about values, uh, all of those things will have endeared her and will continue to endear her to the Tanzanian people. Her demeanor is exactly what Tanzanians want out of a president. Uh, uh, and therefore, I suspect uh, that it is it is not going to uh, affect Tanzanians as much, especially since uh, she's giving them the reforms they want uh, so much. And and let's also remember that the, the in as much as she's Zanzibari, she's also a Muslim, and mainline Tanzania is almost fifty percent Muslim. So uh, she also has that support. Well, Mark Bachachi, Arise uh, East Africa analyst, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and for your analysis.